Welcome. <laughs> well, we're here, guys. It is video number five of the Onyx Mapping Whitetail series, and we're back at a familiar spot. A few videos ago, you all saw us down here where we were scouting for access right next to this lake, and we decided we we're going to come right back in here and try to find some bedding areas today. So Zach and I and Greg and Ted are going to head up into the timber here to a bunch of spots that we marked on the map here recently. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to find buck bedding areas. We're going to show you the process that we use for finding buck bedding. And, and basically from there, how we would go about setting up. You know, every situation is going to be different, but we're going to go back to this spot. Just compare what we found on the map to what we actually find when we put the boots on the ground and try to make up a plan to hunt it. Yeah, it's about half mile back in there to where we're wanting to get to. There's mm -hmm. a pretty thick ridge that faces to the south down into the next cove. And we wouldn't actually access this when hunting it from this direction. We would probably put in a kayak right here and go around. There's an old rub over there. Getting close. Little trail that runs through there too, right there in that spot. Here's a very worn bed right here. Right up against this cedar tree. You can see how that deer is laying in there right up against this back cover and it's facing this direction. You can actually see quite a bit down through there. So we just came across the top of this thick ridge. We had to walk through half a mile worth of hardwoods there, those little dips and ridges coming back in here and found a lot of rubs, scrapes, and deer trails in that cover. I'm sure they're bedding in there some, but that stuff's pretty close to the road. And we're thinking if a mature buck is in this area, he's gonna be further back in this security cover. And this is exactly what we were looking at on the map. You've got this ridge that is covered on both sides with cedars and small oaks, just tall grass, thick, nasty cover. And what they're doing here is they're bedding in here up against these trees, but they're not right in the middle of that thick cover. As you can tell, these woods open up here behind me. This is actually private land. The, the fence is about 20 yards away from me right here. And that's all wide open timber over on the private grounds. And he's completely bulletproof in this spot. If anything comes to the top of that ridge, he's gonna smell it. If anything comes from the private side through those open woods, he's gonna see it. And he's gonna retreat back into security cover. And if you get down in the bed, just like he would be laying in here, he's laid up, tucked up against this cedar tree He's watching straight down through these open woods. I mean, it's middle of summer right now, so it's about as thick as it's gonna get, and I can still see 50, 60 yards down through those woods. He's just laying here with wind coming right over his back from the top of the ridge. So once you get in here and you find these beds, what we'll do is we'll mark them on Onyx. We'll mark these, not necessarily just these individual beds, but we'll mark the bedding area, and then we'll get in the beds within the bedding area, and we'll see what these deer can see and then we're trying to find ways to set up around them without alerting the deer. And that's gonna be the next part of this video. I would assume, Greg, too, with the way this transition is from thick cover to open woods, that there's gonna be bedding all down this transition line for westerly type winds, southerly winds. This would be, this bed's more suited for a westerly type wind of some sort. So if we keep following this, we should find more of them. There's another one right here, looks like anyway. Found another bed right in here, and this one's not near as obvious as the last one, but there's droppings in it. And if you ever find a bedding location that you're not sure of, you gotta get down and dig in the actual bed, and you'll actually find hair in it if a deer has bedded there before. This is the same general setup that we were just looking at 30 yards away. No bed is necessarily created equal. I mean, this one they may not have used for some time now. It looks, you know, pretty old, but it could be one that they're using during the fall when acorns are dropping in these woods, for example. Keep that in mind as you're finding bedding areas that a lot of this is seasonal bedding and deer will only use it during certain times of the year. But they constantly have these factors in their favor when it comes to buck bedding. They've gotta have that wind, sight, or hearing advantage in the bedding area, or they're just not gonna bed there. I wanna look for fence crossings down that fence there, Ted. 
anywhere where there's that fence is falling down or something. Right here, the fence is down. We've been walking down this transition. There hasn't been a lot of trails coming out of that bedding area and headed up into those hardwoods until we got to right here. And there's like four major trails coming out of this bedding cover going across onto this hardwood ridge. And the reason being is this fence is down right through here. And fence crossings are definitely something that you need to be paying attention to, especially in a situation like this where you have a really good fence most of the way up the boundary, except in this one spot, because you've got four trails that are merging right here. This would be an excellent spot for a camera or a stand potentially in the rut. We're getting far enough back away from the road where very few people should be hunting in here. The next step though is figuring out how you would get into this location to hunt. And that goes back to what Zach and I were originally talking about with the kayak access through the lake. The lake is several hundred yards away from us right here, but you could yak all the way around a lot of this timber and this bedding cover that we've been walking through and hook in the back door. This area is real close to where I initially guessed. And I bet there's bedding in that next draw over too, because that's one of my original pins right there. But right here where we're at, it would be hard to know what exactly is going on just from looking at the map. That fence crossing you never see from a map, this trail crossing right here and this bedding around this pretty subtle transition you would never see from the map. That's why you make the guess and then you come in here, boots on the ground and you figure it out. Right now we're about 50 yards from where that fence crossing is and there's another really good crossing right here at the head of this drainage. This actually washes into that pond down there and I would assume that it starts cutting out pretty deep where the deer aren't crossing it and that's why there's so many trails right through this area. And right up in here, about 10 yards away from me, there's a bunch of beds right here in the edge of the transition facing that open timber. I'm gonna follow these trails in there right now and see if I can find another bed. It looks like there's a little opening in the brush up there. I would guess that that's another bed. If we start finding rubs in these beds, there's a pretty good bet that uh, bucks are using them. Entry trail that I walked in on is coming right through here and the bed is right here where I'm sitting. The deer's just backed in here, probably watching right down that trail with wind coming in from this way. That's why you can't set up directly over top of that crossing that Greg's standing at right now is because you're gonna be, you know, 10 yards from a bedded deer, potentially. That's why you gotta get in here, find the beds, and then make your strategy from there. That bedding area is right behind me here. About 40 yards away is where the start of the beds begin and they run all the way up that transition. So I'm just following this exit trail out, trying to get out of sight of those beds. Well, we made it over the top of this ridge. We were just in that bedding area, probably 75 yards away from us. And we're looking for a stand location in here to try to set up as close to that thing as possible without spooking those deer. What we've got here is this little gradual ridge. A few minutes ago, we were down in that low spot right along the edge of the bedding. And we've come up over the top of it here, just far enough where we can't see that transition where all that bedding was at. We're not very far away from it, but I want to make sure that we're just out of sight from that location. We got three oaks right here that are growing up. It's kind of like a triple trunk tree. There's another good one right here behind me too, where you could come in from this direction and climb up in one of those trees, only get about 12, 15 feet up, stay out of sight of those bedded deer, yet still be close enough to them to kill them during daylight. And that main fence crossing is 30 yards up there. There's another smaller one right here at 15. Then there's another one that's running right here, you know, right at the base of the tree, essentially. So based on the bedding that we found, this is where we would likely set up in a tree stand, trying to get as close as we can without alerting the deer. I'm gonna go ahead and add a waypoint here on Onyx. And then we're gonna walk out and trace our trail out of here so that we can uh, come up with a good access plan to get back to this spot.
that bedding area we were just scouting is right down here below us. There's actually two fingers that come off of that thick ridge. That original ridge that we found the, the initial beds on is just right over there. And there's two ditches that come off of it. Both of them are real thick. One goes on the left side of that pond, one goes on the right side. And that fence crossing is just right up there. But I'm thinking right now about how we get in to hunt that bedding area. The best way to do that is if we come in from the lake, you might be able to just see it right over there my fingers point. If we come in on kayaks around the lake and then come up the top of this ridge and hook all the way around to that fence row and then go in right behind that pond, we can get to that fence crossing. There's actually a little knob I walked down in there a minute ago that will shield your access from most of that edge bedding that we found. Obviously, this is gonna make more sense when you're looking at it on a map, but in theory, it seems to work. If, as long as you're planning your hunt at the correct time, you know, if they're not feeding on that corn and there's no acorns in that timber, there may not be a lot of deer using that bedding area. That's why the map scouting in combination with the boots on the ground scouting is so important. We made our initial guess, which landed our pin right over there about 200 yards away, and we ended up fine tuning our stand location over here at that fence crossing. Well, we made it back to the car. We're hot, we're tired, we found some good spots. But that's going to conclude the fifth episode of our Mapping Whitetail series. Uh, we're going to do a sixth and final show on the evening of August 6th. It'll be a live Q&A podcast where we answer all your all's questions from the first five videos. So if you have any questions about this fifth video, please post them in the comments below and we will try to get to them during the live feed on August 6th. So just follow us at our Facebook page, The Hunting Public, and you should be able to catch that. If you haven't already checked out the Onyx Hunt app, go over to onyxmaps.com. And to get 20% off all their apps, use the promo code THP. That's capital T-H-P. Greg's got a bite. Just keep rolling. Pretty much every time that we're looking at a piece of public land, whether we're at home, whether we're traveling, whether we're, or we're traveling within our own state, you know, we're doing this whole process. We're looking at it, looking at the access, eliminate areas that we think are gonna get a lot of pressure, and then, you know, just the next stage is down the line. And the whole time, we're just marking that on our map. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you all got to see the entire process, you know, from the get-go, when we start and actually pick an area to go hunt all the way to identifying potential tree stand locations and setups for this fall, which is something that we're already doing a lot right now with our public land deer tour coming up this fall. We're gonna be hunting multiple different states where we've never been before. We're gonna be picking new public areas and going into them using this exact same process. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it's gonna pay off. It's the beauty of it all, it's just a game out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just stuck in the middle of this game all the time. It's true. <laughs>